Hey Virtue Crew, welcome to my channel. Okay, this cool down stretch is designed to both calm your nervous system after an intense workout, which is really important for recovery, but it's also gonna stretch out any residual tightness you may have in your body. All in all, it's gonna be a win. I'm glad you're here. Okay, we'll begin in Sufta Baddha Konasana. So this pose is designed to open the hips. But what I really want you to do here is to place your hands onto your belly and focus on the rise and fall of the belly as you breathe. Allow your shoulders to relax, your jaw to relax, your face to relax. And just really tune back into the body. We'll be here for another three slow breaths. Inhaling deeply, exhaling fully. Okay, next, let's hug the knees in to the chest and we'll come into what's called Pavan Muktasana. So the right knee is gonna hug into the chest as the left leg extends all the way down. Now, if you're getting any pinching in your right hip, just release the stretch slightly. I know there might be a little bit of an impingement sensation going on. We don't wanna push into that. Now from here, try to relax your belly. This pose is designed to not only stretch the groin and the hamstring, but also to compress through the abdominal organs, massaging th them through that compression. You may also feel the left leg stretch slightly here as well. Take a moment here, inhaling and exhaling. Okay, take the left hand to the outside of that right knee and take the leg across the body for just an easy reclined twist. We'll stay here for a few breaths. Go ahead and extend the right arm back behind you or out to the side, wherever feels most comfortable for you and don't force anything. Just melt into this twist. Allow yourself to melt into your own current level of flexibility. Use the inhale to come back to center. Keep hold of that right leg and we'll take some active hamstring stretches. So holding onto that right knee, kick the right foot up into the air. That's it. Drop it down and then we'll go again for five, four, three, two, and one. Okay, and now we'll take a passive hamstring stretch. So go ahead and grab whatever you can, maybe the shin, the ankle, or the foot. If you have a towel nearby, a towel's really nice because it allows you to relax all the way back down. The leg does not have to be straight. Just start to pull it in until you get that stretch sensation. Stay nice and relaxed. I'm just holding here for five more breaths. And with every exhalation, I want you to relax your jaw, relax your hips, relax your stomach, relax your neck. So everything's staying nice and relaxed. The only thing that obviously isn't relaxed is your arms as you pull that leg in. Okay, go ahead and release that leg all the way down to the floor. Interlace your fingers, reach your arms up above your head, stretch, and then we'll go ahead for the left side. Left knee hugs in, Pavan Muktasana on the left side. Keep the shoulders nice and relaxed. The right leg is extending and lengthening, creating space through the front of the right hip and compressing through the left side. Okay, remember to back off if you feel any pinching. Take the right hand to the outside of the left knee, take the knee across the body down to the floor and come into that reclined twist. Notice that as you inhale, you'll be pulled out of the twist slightly, but as you exhale, you can melt into it a little bit further. Again, I'm gonna keep reminding you to relax your face, relax your eyes, just come into the breath. Alrighty, come back to center. Kick that left foot up towards the ceiling for an active hamstring stretch for five, four, three, two, one. Now we'll take hold of the shin, ankle or foot, pulling the leg in. Try to keep the hips square here. Your left hip may try to hike up to the side. Just have a little look down and make sure it doesn't. Starting to pull that leg a little bit deeper if you can handle the sensation, but still maintaining a relaxed state of mind and being. And the way to do that is with the breath. I've got two more breaths here. Good, and release. Interlace your fingers, extend your arms up above your head, extend your legs, really stretch up, and then go ahead and hug the knees into your chest. We're gonna rock up and down and come into an all fours position. We're gonna do a little bit of cat-cow to lubricate the spine. 
Spread the fingers nice and wide, take the knees hip distance apart. And go ahead, inhale, drop the belly down, lift up through the head and the hips. Heart opens and the shoulders pull back. Really enjoy this sensation. And then belly button to the spine, push the floor away, head down. Let the head drop all the way. There's a tendency to keep tension in the neck. I want you to really relax it. Use your abs here as well, suck the belly in. Now inhale, drop the belly, lift the head and the hips. Heart opens, shoulders pull back. Exhale, belly button to the spine, push the floor away, head down. Two more like this, inhale and exhale, inhale and exhale. Okay, come back to a neutral spine here. Maybe move your hands a little bit further apart so they're shoulder distance if they weren't there already. And tuck your toes, you're gonna lift your knees off and push your hips back. We're coming into downward facing dog or in Sanskrit, Adho Mukha Svanasana. So what we need to make sure of here, and we're in downward dog now, when you're in it, you're probably gonna feel your hamstrings tighten or you'll feel that sensation of tight hamstrings. I just want you to walk out through the heels, just as I'm doing here, opening up through the back of the legs. Shake out your head, yes and no. Back of the neck relaxes, belly pulls in. Don't just go ahead and try and straighten your legs here. Keep a little micro bend in the knees until you feel like you can straighten your legs, but also maintain a long spine. Take a few deep breaths here. Beautiful. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and lift the right leg high up towards the ceiling, as high as you possibly can. And then we're gonna move it forward into pigeon pose. So the right knee is gonna come behind the right hand. You come forward into a plank position. And then from there, your left foot, you wanna adjust it. So the further forward you take your left foot, the more intense the external rotation is going to be on that right hip. If your left foot is closer to your hip, or closer to your left hip and the knee is more bent, you'll feel less of an intense stretch. You might feel it a little bit in the knee with the compression. You've got to find the happy medium here. Come into the comfortable position for yourself. Come up to the fingertips, lift up through the chest, heart opens and then exhale. We're gonna melt down into pigeon pose for a bit of a hold here. So just notice if you're kind of collapsing over to the right side, try to keep the hips square. Shoulders remain relaxed, face remains relaxed, jaw remains relaxed, eyes may remain relaxed. And we wanna feel as though we're breathing into the back rib cage. So you have these intercostal muscles, which are the muscles in between the rib cage, and we wanna feel like we're expanding. So those intercostal muscles contracting to pull the rib cage open, particularly at the sides and the back. And really expanding and taking that breath back in. And exhale. Be feeling a nice stretch through that right hip. Maybe you're getting a little bit at the front of your left hip. Now from here, we're gonna lift back up and we're gonna stay in this pigeon pose. We're gonna see if we can grab the back foot, so that left leg. So we're gonna bend the left knee, reach around. If you do reach around, just make sure you don't kind of fall over to that right hip. Keep the hips square. Grab hold of the foot and start to pull the heel in towards your buttocks. Keep the shoulders nice and relaxed here as well. Beautiful. Now if you can't reach, don't worry. Just You can use a towel or you can just bend that back leg or you can just simply stay in pigeon pose and keep yourself lifted. This will still open the left hip. We're gonna take one more breath here and then slowly release. Place the hands onto the floor if they weren't there already. Press back into downward facing dog. Walk out through the heels. Open up through the back of the legs. Shake out your head yes and no. Downward dog is a beautiful neutralizing pose in between postures. Left leg is going to lift up now and let's bring it forward. Left knee to the back of the left wrist and then the right foot. Place it as high or as close to your right wrist as possible without feeling any kind of torque or, or pain in your left knee. I'm only feeling a stretch in the hip. Make any adjustments you need to. And let's go ahead and go down and move into the stretch. Allow your shoulders to relax, your face to relax, everything to soften. And just breathe deeply here.
Okay, that was the last breath in pigeon. Let's lift up onto the hands. And then we're gonna go ahead and bend your back knee. Pull that back foot if you can and pull it in towards your buttocks. Beautiful. Holding here. Stretching out through the quads on that right side. If you can't do it, no worries. Just stay lifted in your child, in your pigeon pose. Good, and then release your hands and we'll step back into downward facing dog. Pressing all the way back, or walk out through the heels, open up through the back of the legs, shake out your head yes and no. And go ahead, drop your knees to the floor. And we'll just come into a very quick child's pose here. Knees come out nice and wide, feet together. Take a deep breath in, back of the ribs expand. Long exhale, melting down. Slowly unroll back up to center. Thank you so much for cooling down with me. I hope you enjoyed this particular practice. Hey, I have so many other videos like this and more, and I would highly recommend checking out some of my beginner yoga sequences because they're awesome to add to any cool down series or sequence. Thank you and namaste.